What is mindfulness? A lot of this is about integrating mindfulness and cognitive approaches to focus your attention more effectively. Mindfulness is an activity. It's something you do with your attention. Mind is movement in, this is what Susan said yesterday, mind is movement, not just in your brain, I, I think that's too limiting, but it's mental movement. It's, it, it's, it's movement that definitely affects your physical movement, but is certainly not reducible in any sense to anything physical. Mindfulness is an activity of your attention, an activity of your spirit. It's a state of mind. Eventually it can become a way of being, a state of mind, but it doesn't start out that way. You just don't get in the zone. It's kind of like tuning a radio. It, if, if you're looking for a distant station, you tune that radio and you bring it in. When you bring it in, you can hear it more clearly. It's, it's that kind of enhanced awareness that can pick out the truth from all of the noise. Mindfulness is very empowering at picking out the truth from all of the noise. It's an awareness. It's an awareness of what's happening right now. And it's an awareness that gets strengthened to picking out and properly understanding with insight the true aspects of what's happening right now. It's a focus. It's consciously directing your attention, not necessarily narrowly. Could be narrow, could be broad, could be large, could be small. An infinite amount of grading, of choices about how you focus your attention. But that's the big point. With mindfulness, we bring choice into how our attention is focused. Our attention is not just grabbed by the brain. Our attention is not just directed at every advertising sign that goes by. We, we feel the pull, but we don't have to go there. Much more on that tomorrow in the workshop. And then acceptance. You accept what's there. Accepting what's there makes it easier to not pay attention to it if your choice is to not pay attention to it. If you start fighting with it, you get tied in and trapped by it. Acceptance is freeing in the sense that you accept that a lot of what comes into your mind is deceptive brain message. That's not you. That's one of the big advantages of realizing you're not your brain. If you realize, I am not my brain, it's much easier to accept what's there because it's not you. It's things that you can do about by recognizing with mindfulness and redirecting your attention. Mindfulness works. It works to make your life more constructive, and it works to change your brain in very, very functional and productive ways. The results of using mindfulness are brain changes that decrease distress, anxiety, and depression, that allow for more rational decisions and actions by increasing voluntary conscious emotion regulation and symptom management. Very empowering. Making rational decisions and actions that increase voluntary conscious emotion regulation. Very important. And a practical way to learn mindfulness is these four steps. They were created to enhance the use of mindfulness in day-to-day -day practical living. And always remember, consult your wise advocate, because the wise advocate, that inner positive power inside of you, is the thing that really connects you to mindful awareness. Mindfulness works. Understanding that your brain has been acting in unhelpful ways, and that you, through applying mindfulness, can change how your brain functions in positive ways, Mindfulness is very empowering. By implying it, you can change how your brain functions in very positive ways. This helps people be become more motivated and empowered to change their brain to work for them rather than against them. Now, I just want to take a minute right now and show you how easy and fast it can be to use mindful awareness. It doesn't have to be some drawn out meditation. I meditate for an hour a day, but you certainly don't have to to get positive results. I want to take a minute right now and show you how easy simple breath meditation is because simple breath meditation is one of the main ways that we regulate to help us refocus. There's 
fair amount about that in the book You Are Not Your Brain, and certainly will be in the workshop tomorrow. I'm just asking you now for one minute or so to watch your breath, close your eyes, sit comfortably, be aware of the breath going in and going out at the nostril. There are other places one can observe, like the abdomen, but the simplest place is the entry of the air through the nasal passage, where the nostril meets the air, where the inner world meets the outer world. Be aware of the movement of the air. When you breathe in, a simple to yourself, one. When you breathe out, a simple to yourself, two. One, two. You can count up to four, six, but the maximum is 10. If you get to 10, start over. Let's take a minute and do this. In, one, out, two. Breathing with awareness of the feeling of the passing of the air at the entrance to the nostril, where the inner world meets the outer world. Be aware of the sensation of the movement of the air in one, out, two. If the mind wanders, go back to one. Don't say, where was I? Just go back to one. Forty-five seconds. It can feel like a long time when the mind is wandering and you're trying to calm it down. But the point is, that observation naturally calms the breath, naturally increases our awareness. <laughs> 